Okay, so for this video, we will look at payback period. We will first define what this means, then we will do this example question. So first, let's define what we mean by payback period. So the payback period is going to be the lengthening time it takes for an investment to regain its own initial cost through the annual benefits generated or through the cost savings we had. So let's say, for example, a simple example might be buying a laptop. Let's say we buy a laptop and we invest an initial investment, initial cost we put down. Then we know we're going to, we intend to buy the laptop to do some work, right? We buy the laptop to maybe do some freelance work. We do some CAD work and that's going to be what we generate year after year. That's the benefits or the annual savings that we generate year after year. So the payback period looks at, for example, is the payback period, the payback time in the future where we have accumulated or generated enough money to pay back the original investment of the laptop. And that's when we, if we look at the cash flow, that's when we essentially have accumulative cash flow that's going to be positive. So we gain more money at that time. And we'll see that we have a positive value for the cumulative cash flow. So now if we discuss some flaws about the payback period, we know first that projects with a shorter payback period are not always more profitable than those projects with a longer payback period. So we know that payback ignores the returns beyond the payback period or the time where we have that payback period. So for example, let's say we have a payback period of four years. We ignore everything after that four years, all the profit that we could have generated or accumulated. So it doesn't necessarily mean if you have a lower payback period does not mean you're more profitable. And this goes into the second point is the payback method or payback does not essentially consider the time value of money. It does not consider the time value of money we could have accumulated at the end of the lifetime of the equipment, part, or a project. And then we know the salvage value, this is important, the salvage value received from the sale of an old equipment or machine or anything should always be considered when computing the payback period of the new equipment we're considering. And we'll see that below. So for this example, we will just talk about this. Let's say we have a firm that has just bought a new machine and it cost $105,000. $105, and this, is, this new machine is intended to replace the one that has a salvage value of $20,000. So we're done with the old machine, right? We have that salvage value. So this is a positive value that we get initially right it's a salvage value of 20,000 so the projected annual after tax saving via improved efficiency which will exceed the investment costs are as follows so what we're given here is the cash flows and n is the year this is zero at present one year two three four five six we go up to six years and notice how at the beginning we do have an initial cost right of negative 105 this is the cost of the new machine, right? And then we have to always, if we are comparing it to an old machine, we have to always add that salvage value, right, of 20,000. This is the salvage value of 20,000, which is a positive value we get in the present. It's like extra cash we get for that machine or equipment. Then what we do for the payback period is we're assuming we're looking at the cumulative flow. So at zero, we're going to say we're going to take the negative 105 plus 2000 and we get negative 85, right? So we're still in the negative there. So we haven't hit payback yet. We haven't hit that payback period. Then we go on, we go to year one. We know now we're at 15,000 for the cash flow. So this is given. Then what's the cumulative? You take the negative 85 plus 15, we get negative 70, right? That's the cumulative. So we start, we're at negative 70. Let's go to the year two, where we have a cash flow in of 25,000. So we take negative 70 plus 25, we get negative 45. 
and you keep going right you keep going you keep going and the payback period if I ask you this how long does it take to recover the initial investment for this example where is that it's going to be when we begin to have a positive cumulative flow cash flow when we have a positive value that's when we have the payback period so in this particular case we know it occurs when it occurs somewhere here right it occurs somewhere between year three and year four so it might be 3.5 3.2 but we know since we are transitioning from negative 10,000 to positive 35,000 in that cumulative column that's when the payback occurs so we know it occurs somewhere here the payback payback and the very last thing I want to look at for this same example just to understand what we have here is let's say we have the cash flow diagram for this particular example we know here that 85 is down right so it's gonna be negative this is what we put at the beginning at present negative 85,000 and that's going to be this value right so then we have 15,000 in the cash flow to positive 25 so we have 15 25 35 45 45 35 and that's all given there so essentially the values that we're missing if you had to draw these is the down ones right so we have at the beginning that negative 70 negative 45 negative 10 right so negative 70,000 negative 45,000 then we have the negative 10,000 and then that year between year three and year four we have that's when we transition to a positive right so it's gonna be 35,000 so that's gonna be going up so we have a positive 35,000 in that case so we know the payback period again it occurs somewhere between year three and four when we have a positive cumulative value so that's all that for the concept just in case we get a conceptual question on the FE but now let's jump into a calculation based question so now we're told to improve manufacturing efficiency a firm is considering the purchase of a new machine to replace a current machine being used to manufacture parts so we're manufacturing and producing parts here with a new machine that we're going to consider so the current machine requires an initial investment of 5000 with a manufacturing cost of 2.50 that's for the current machine being used the new machine requires an initial investment of 12000 with a manufacturing cost per unit of 1.50 that's for the new machine neglecting interest the total units produced by the firm per year is 6000 when compared to the current machine the payback period in years to invest in the new machine is most nearly what what is the payback period if we invest in the new machine so what this is saying is we're gonna pick the new machine so we're picking the new machine and we want to find the payback period for the new machine when we compare it to the current machine or the old machine that's currently being used so the, the focus here is the new machine right that's what we're actually gonna invest in so let's begin by writing what we're given and I'll do two columns essentially here so I'll just call on the left the current machine current machine in red and on the right we will have the new machine that we will pick or the firm wants to pick this this is what they're picking so we know the initial cost I'll call it IC for initial cost IC is initial cost in this case for the current machine is 5000 what's the initial cost for the new machine so for the current machine the current machine requires is 5000 for the the new machine requires 12,000 initial cost right initial cost is 12,000 so then we have the manufacturing cost for the current machine I'll call it man MC for manufacturing cost and that is going to be 2.50 per unit 
dollars per unit that's for the current machine and that's in the statement right 2.50 the new machine with a manufacturing cost of 1.50 so it has a lower manufacturing cost and that's why we're considering it right we're improving the overall manufacturing efficiency anyway that's the manufacturing cost for the new machine it's going to be 1.50 per unit so we have that then we know the total number of parts produced the firm produces per year is estimated to be 6,000 so we know I'll just write that on both number of parts is 6,000 and the same here number of parts is going to be 6,000 so we have all of that now let's calculate the payback period if we were to invest in the new machine so we know the payback period by definition I'll write the example the equation so payback is going to equal it's always a period we usually use years it's going to be the initial cost divided by the uniform annual benefits uniform annual benefits so for this particular example we know the initial cost is going to be what we have to invest the initial cost is actually the initial investment so if we compare the new machine to the current machine isn't the initial investment just the difference between 12,000 and 5,000 that's what we have to actually take out of pocket right we take 12,000 minus 5,000 and we can get that initial cost of 7,000 or it's going to be the initial investment so the way I'll rewrite this I'll just do the change in costs down here up here sorry for the initial cost when we compare the new machine to the current machine and on the bottom we know the uniform annual benefits it's going to be the benefits we get that's going to be essentially the savings the savings we get when we consider which part we're going to save when the manufacturing per unit is going to be lower right this has a higher manufacturing cost than the new machine so we know we're obviously saving with respect to the manufacturing so that's going to be on the bottom it's going to be the change in savings and it's going to be specifically the change in savings with respect to the manufacturing when we use the new machine the firm gets the new machine so let's first solve for the change in costs and that's going to be what we have on the bottom and we know that is going to be dependent on the initial cost right so in this case what we're gonna do is simply take the initial cost of the new machine of 12,000 minus the current machine of 5,000 and that will give us the total initial cost we have to put down or the initial investment that always goes on top so what we do there is take 12,000 for the new machine minus the 5,000 for the current machine and for that we should get about 7,000 so this is the initial cost that we have to put down the initial investment then we have that on top all we have to do is find the bottom this is the uniform annual benefits that we get per year always note this is per year the it's essentially going to be the savings with respect to manufacturing in this particular question so what we do there is always take the higher number minus the lower number but we know first is going to be our right the Delta savings we know this depends on manufacturing call it manufacture and we know that we had to always take the higher number minus the lower number but be careful it has to be a dollar amount per year so what we have to do is for the current machine we have to take 2.50 per unit times the number of units which is 6,000 units right this is 6,000 units this is 6,000 units that are being produced 
So we take 2.50 times 6,000. That's going to be what we put first. So we do 2.50. Let me put the dollar sign. 2.50 per unit times the 6,000 units, right? 6,000 units or parts. So that's going to be what we have for the current machine. It's going to be the higher number. That's going to be there. Then we do minus, minus the current manufacturing cost, right? Sorry, the new manufacturing cost for the new machine. So that's going to be what? It's going to be here. 1.50 per unit times 6,000 units. So we do 1.50 per unit times that 6,000 does not change. 6,000 units. So then we close that and that's going to be for the new machine that we're going to pick. So notice how these cancel, right? They're across from each other. So now we have a dollar amount and it should be a dollar amount per year. So I'm missing something. It's going to be the total units produced per year. Sorry, this is important. It's per year. It's 6,000 units per year. So I just want to make sure that's there because eventually the units actually match. So it's going to be 6,000 units per year. This is per year, right? So notice how the units are dollar per year, dollar per year. So if we do the math for that, the savings, you should get about $6,000 per year. That's going to be $6,000 per year dollar per year this is in dollars now let's use the payback period e equation we take the change in cost divided by the savings or the initial cost divided by the annual benefits so the payback it's going to be what we have for the top is seven thousand dollars so that's seven thousand and we divide by the six thousand dollars per year right six thousand dollars per year and this is the savings this is the benefits we get every year so notice how the dollar units cancel so we have only years and that's the correct the correct units we need so seven thousand divided by six thousand it's essentially seven divided by six we get about 1.2 years so this will be our answer so in this case, all the answers are very close, so be careful. It should be 1.2. And that's it. Thank you.